Hello, my fellow engineers. Today, we're going to uh, start talking about trusses. So it's sort of our beginning of um, applying those principles that we've been learning to some more realistic structures. So um, a truss is a framework composed of members that are joined at their ends to form a rigid structure. So bridges, um, roofs, supports, um, they're all over the place. Um, there are two basic flavors of trusses. There's the plain truss, and this is um, pretty obvious when all members lie in a plane. Much easier to analyze. And a lot of situations can be um, simplified to that. And space trusses, which as you probably guess, this is a 3D truss. So up till now, we've been concerned only with external forces on an object. Now we're going to be concerned with internal and external, but the same rules apply. We still want all our forces to sum to zero. We still want all our moments to sum to zero um, anywhere on the structure. So an important note, this, without understanding this, you will not be able to solve the problems. We are going to assume that trusses are made entirely of two force members. Okay, remember a two force member. The forces are always going to be collinear. Okay, may not be out the ends. All right, maybe at some angle, but the forces are going to be collinear. They're going to be along the same line. So you know, you know that, um, you know the direction of the force. Okay, you always know the directions of the forces, right? So this also means that the members are pinned at each end. Because remember, they have to be able to rotate so that the forces can line up to be collinear. Right? So this means, in turn, that we are neglecting the mass, or the let's say the weight, because we're talking forces, the weight of each member. Okay, um, so in real life, um, obviously the members have mass, and in real life also, if you have, um, you know, a, something going on like this, all right, these are not simply pinned. There's like a plate welded here, or there's something else going on here um, to offer more support. So, um, so in real life, um, the ends actually um, are bolted to plates, bolted, bolted, to plates, welded, Etc. So they have more support. So our analysis is a, it can be considered a conservative estimate. Okay, of the forces acting on on this, um, because there's more support than we're taking into account. But it also is much harder um, to analyze. These you need more equations if you're considering these other forces. Um, a little look ahead in section um, four six, uh, we'll consider frames. Frames have 
um, at least one three fourths member. Okay, so after we get comfortable with trusses, we'll take a look at those. All right, um, and frames, we're also going to consider machines. And um, these are frames, frames, a structure with a three fourths member, frames with a movable part. Okay. So that's um, our introduction to trusses. Now there's, um, and I'm going to stop there for, for this one and uh, we're going to come back and we're going to uh, use the method of joints. There's two ways to analyze, two ways to analyze um, uh, trusses. One, the method of joints, and two is um, the method of sections. Okay, so I'm going to stop this here, and uh, just to break things up into reasonable time blocks, um, going to start with uh, method of joints in the next video. Bye-bye.